This is Joshua Hart here for Seconds Out. Delighted today to be joined by Kyoman Ajako. Kyoman, first of all, thank you very much for your time today. And how are we doing? Yeah, I'm not too bad, thanks. Uh, just relaxing until my next session, but yeah, I'm good, thanks. It's good to hear. We'll get straight into things, so I don't want to take up too much of your time today. Um, we'll start off by looking at your last fight. Last time out, you were against Troy Williamson at home in Belfast. Um, how do you reflect on that night? Yeah, it was a great night. Um, great night, good step up for me, obviously. There was a lot of whispers saying I was turning down the fight and whatever else, but um, yeah, it was good to go in and put on a, a good performance and, and get a good win against a, a good name in the weight division. And were the rumours, obviously, with you ducking the fight, did they agitate you at any point and make you perform better on fight night just to show that you weren't ducking it after all? Um, I wouldn't say they would, They agitated me, but I, I do think I let that fuel me um, in training camp in terms of um, pushing that bit harder to to prove everybody wrong. Do you know what I mean? I, I knew myself that I'd never turned down the fight. I knew my team knew we'd never turned down the fight. Um, and yeah, I kind of just used that to to push me and make sure that I I got the win on the net. And obviously, we've not really seen much talk since then. Um, with another fight for yourself, have you had any dates pushed at you this year? No, I haven't. Unfortunately, um. Yeah, it was a bit of a strange one. I mean, um, I came out of that fight or went into that fight um, with kind of, obviously I was saying the match and I'm now a free agent, but I, I went into that fight with Eddie Horn being like, you need, a, you need to step up, you need a big fight. And I took that and I went and beat Troy and then everything, obviously that was my last fight with, with Matrim and then I, everything kind of went quiet and um, heard nothing else from it. But that's boxing at times, you know what I mean? I, I understand the game and... Um, I'm I'm just I'm in the gym in Liverpool just staying ready um for, for another opportunity. How frustrating is it when you have a good win against a man like Troy Williamson and then you don't really hear much for a long time, especially when you're probably expecting another big fight on the back of that? Um yeah, it's it's very frustrating, you know, because I wanna push on, I wanna kick on, I want I want big fights and um I wanna keep progressing with my career and it's like every time I get myself into decent rankings or something like that, something pushes me back and then it's like restarting all over again. So um, it, it's frustrating to come off a big win against Troy um, and not really have anything from, from Eddie um, after that because it was a big win, it was a comfortable win, a, a convincing win and to do it back home in, in Belfast to show um, Eddie or other promoters that I can um, go back to, to Belfast and, and start the headline in, in big fights. Uh, it's frustrating, you know, because I've got a great fan base. Do you know what I mean? I sold a lot of tickets for that fight. Um, uh, the Irish, the Irish fans and and fight fans and public get behind me, so um, it is quite frustrating. But I don't cry over spilt milk. I I keep myself in the gym, um, keep myself busy, um, improving every single day. And when the right opportunity comes, I'll I'll be knocking on the door. Uh, talking of opportunities, very recently we've seen the announcement of the Queensbury versus Matchroom five v five. Uh, if you were still signed with Matchroom, would there have been any chance of you being a backup as a middleweight for the five v five, possibly? Um, I I don't think as a middleweight, no. Um, who is the middleweight? It's Hamza Shiraz versus Amo Williams. Know. Yeah, a great fight. No, I don't. I don't think of middleweight, no, because listen, I, I even though I've only had two fights at late middle, I am a late middleweight, and that's that's the reason why I went down to to late middle because. I wanted to get the best out of my potential and and start using my my advantages rather than be up at a weight that I wasn't necessarily big enough at. Um, do you know what I mean? I, I did carry my power up and I I was still a good, a good middleweight. Um, but I think light middleweight suits me a lot better. So, um, that's where I'll be com campaigning at for for the time being. And how are things with Hearn and Matchroom after the public comments? Um, regarding warm up fights, how is everything between you and, and Matchroom? No, listen, we left on good terms. There's no hard feeling. I understand the game and I understand that Eddie just wants big fights for his for his fighters. Um I do think there's a there's a time for fighters to be stepped up and I thought that was the right time for me to be stepped up. I just I felt dis a bit disappointed that Eddie kinda being my promoter should have really backed me and, and not really said what he said. But there's no hard feelings, you know what I mean? This is just boxing. Um do you know I mean it's not to say I'll never work with Matrim again or anything like that. It's it's boxing and um I appreciate all the opportunities that he gave me um from the start. So um 
yeah, that that's just bottom it. And obviously, you have mentioned that you are now a promotional free agent, but we can still look at some fights for yourself. We'll start off with some domestic names. Uh, Ishmael Davis has been calling out your name a little bit recently after a good win against Ishmael Davis. Um, first of all, what did you make of Ishmael's performance that night against Troy Williamson? It was a good performance. Um, I thought it was close. It was a lot closer than um, the, the, so, the scorecard suggested. Um but yeah, I thought I thought it was a good performance from Ishmael. Listen, he he did what he had to do, and um, he, he beat Troy. Uh, so yeah. And would you welcome a fight between yourself and him? Yeah, definitely. But I think I've I've said this before in interviews. You know what I mean? It's like I'm looking to push on, and when there's the certain promoters calling for me to to step up into big fights, is that really a big fight for me in terms of Ismail just beat somebody I that I beat, and has no titles. Um, isn't ranked in any of the rankings, um, so not not to just put disrespect onto Ismail, but for me it's a backward step. Do you know what I mean? I I want to push towards the the European title, and for me I want to fight someone that's ranked top ten in in the European rankings to to push on. I I think I'm number seven or number eight, um, so I've got my own career path to focus on. It's definitely a fight I would welcome in time if if it made sense, um. But I don't think I don't think um it's a it's a fight that I would necessarily gain from if I took it next. You know what I mean? I I would be in the exact same position that I'm that I am in now if I go and beat Ismail Davis. If that makes sense, you know what I mean? And um I think Ismail's a good fight. I've showed showed round spawn with him, so that's no disrespect to Ismail. But this is just business, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? And you've got to do what's right for your career. So obviously you mentioned wanting to do what's right for your career, and you wanted to challenge yourself. Uh, the current champion at your weight, the European champion, Abbas Baru, he recently picked up the vacant title after a good win against Sam Eginton and Telford. Um, is it those types of fights that interest you more, fights where you can progress? Yeah, definitely. That's the fight that I that I want next, or in a, in a fight or two. That's the fight that, I, that I've said I want. I, I want them big step-up fights, you know what I mean? And that's a, that's a very tough fight, but a very winnable fight for me. Um, do you know what I mean? I, I think... If I'm right, Abbas Baru's gonna vacate, or he's 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 ranked number one with the WBA, so he's do you know what I mean? It's a it's a, it's a same kind of situation with me and Ismail. It is with me and Abbas. Abbas doesn't really need to fight me. Um, he doesn't really need to fight me. Uh, with his current ranking with the WBA, do you know what I mean? He's in in line for a world title, I believe. So, I'd like if he if he's not gonna um defend that, I would. If he vacates, I want to be in a position to then fight for the European title. Um, obviously, sticking with, I guess, the WPA, um, obviously, you mentioned Abbas Baru is ranked number one with them, but something that is set to get announced in the next couple of days, according to rumours, is uh, Israel Madrimov defending his WBA super welterweight title against Terence Crawford. Um, first of all, what are your thoughts on that fight? Um, it's the first I've heard it, but it's a great fight. Um, it's a good fight, obviously, Terence stepping up to 154, so. Um, listen, Terence is a pound for pound, probably number one at the at the moment. So it's a tough fight for Ismail uh, Majumov, but obviously Terence is stepping up in a in a weight class. So and um, Israel's very had a good amateur background, and he's obviously world champion now, and he he's very technically very good. So be an interesting fight. Do you feel it's a fight that's probably much closer than what the public would make it? Um. I don't know. You know what? I, I, Israel uh, hasn't fought it at at the level that Terence Croft has fought at. You know what I mean? He he wiped out two weight divisions. He wiped out one fifty four and and one four seven. You know what I mean? He's had them big fights and he he's pound for pound best in the world right now. So I wouldn't expect it to be cl uh, close. I wouldn't expect the public to think it's close. But this is boxing. Do you know what I mean? Not not a lot of people thought that Garcia and Haney would have been close and Garcia went and beat him, do you know what I mean? So um anything can happen. And was he with you holding a top a top fifteen ranking with the WBA, was Madrimov a target of yours? Yeah, anyone above me is a target of mine, do you know what I mean? I, I want that number one spot. I want to be a world champion. So um yeah, definitely uh, anyone that is above me is is the the people that I'm chasing. And how would you see a fight um if you were to make a prediction now based on your current thoughts, how would you see a fight between Terence Crawford and Israel Majumov playing out? I would say Terence Crawford probably stops him late.
Fair enough. And then moving on, lastly, before I talk to you about uh, Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia, I feel like it's only right that we talk about Sean McComb, a very good friend of yours. He went over to New York and boxed what seemed the perfect fight um, and made his hardest fight look easy. Um, what are your thoughts, first of all, on the performance from Sean? Great performance from Sean. Um, I tweeted, I think it was around six or seven or maybe a bit later, and I didn't want to jump the gun too soon. But I said Sean's hardest fight of his career is looking to be the easiest fight of his career. Um, I thought he performed out of his skin, boxed when he had to, fought when he had to, let his hands go, do you know what I mean, head and body. Didn't really get caught with too too many clean shots. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, that decision is stinking, do you know what I mean? It's it's corrupt, it's it's just blatant. Like if, if that's anywhere else in the world, Sean McComb gets that decision. If you put three neutral judges from anywhere else in the world, Sean gets that decision, do you know what I mean? To For him to lose, how can one judge have it 98, 92 to Sean and one have it, I think, 97, 93 um, to the other guy? Do you know what I mean? That That's that's just corrupt. So, like, it's not even as if the, the judges had it close on the scorecards. They were two wide cards. Um, So, yeah, I felt very... I felt for Sean because obviously he's he's a friend of mine and I grew up boxed with him for, for fifteen years at the Holy Trinity back in Ireland and um we're from our families are actually close as well and, and from the the same area. So um for him not to get the, the win and when he deserved the win it's it's heartbreaking for Sean. But I believe his stock goes up, do you know what I mean? He might be in a bit of a who needs me now club, but I think he'll still get big opportunities after after that performance. Uh, what do you feel should be done to these judges? Because this isn't the first time we've seen a very poor scorecard from a judge. Um, and there's always been lots of talk of something needs to change, but what can change? I'm not too sure. You know, um, there needs to be something set in, set in place or there needs to be three new... Like, if you're putting three judges down and, and decisions like that are coming out, coming out, there has to be three judges that don't score the fight and seeing how, how they actually score um, behind the scenes, do you know what I mean, and then come to a decision whether a decision like that needs overturned. Because, listen, it's not it's it's not um his opponent's fault, do you know what I mean? It, it's the judge's fault for getting it wrong. But something has to be done. This this can't keep on happening in boxing. You you see stuff happening in other sports that they're they're trying to make it more of a fair sports. I'll give you an example: football. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Even though VAR isn't great at times, um, they're trying to make it better. That has to be done with boxing. They they you. Because realistically, all a, all a, a judge has to do is say, that's how I seen the fight. That's all he has to say is, that's how I seen the fight. And they then they get away with it, but continue to give bad scores. It's corrupt. Do you know what I mean? It, it's just corrupt and something has to be done. I'm not too sure what can be done, but something has to be done. Do you feel they should start possibly looking at the WBC and what some of the things they're doing? Um, Obviously, for one thing, for example, they have the open score in where the corners are told to score cards after four and eight rounds. Do you feel that's something that should be looked at possibly? Um, yeah, definitely. I think any way that it can benefit on it being it be it being fair, definitely. But even at that being, do you know what I mean? Sean going into Sean going into that fight, or it's eight round, seven round, eight, and this he gets the scorecards and gets told he's four rounds down. There's not really much you can do. Like you, you you're then going. It actually could have a negative effect on Sean because now he has to go for a stoppage and maybe get caught with something silly when realistically he's winning the fight and he shouldn't have to go for a stoppage, you know what I mean? So um I think something has to be done. The, the judges have to be put put forward uh, in front of a panel and, and explain how they scored the fight that way, round by round. Do you know what I mean? I mean, Sean outlanded, out through. Do you know what I mean? He threw more punches, scored more landing shots, do you know what I mean? And doesn't get the win in, in the biggest fight of his career. So it's 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 heartbreaking for Sean and I hope that something can be done about it. I know that um his manager Leeton has appealed the decision. Um you see that happening all the time and nothing gets gets done about it. Um but something should be done about it. Do you know what I mean? They have to start making a stand or just sack the judges. If you're if you're going giving bad scorecards like that, sack the judges. Don't let them judge fights because it's unfair on us fighters that have to um that train our, our whole lives for big opportunities like that for, for big fights and and then you've just got some Joe Blog sitting down get, giving a bad scorecard. Do you feel well not necessarily do you feel um 
we know that the team, uh, especially Sean McComb's team and management, we're going to, they're going to want to be looking at the immediate rematch. But how likely is it, do you think, uh, an immediate rematch gets made between the two? Oh, I don't think that gets made at all. Um, I don't think if Bob Boza, I think it's Bob Boza you call him, isn't it? Um, I don't, I don't think he would want that fight with Sean again. It's a high, high risk, low reward as it was in the in the first place. But Sean deserves that at minimal. Do you know what I mean? He, he deserves another payday and a a big fight. And a, um, but that fight should be made in England or in Ireland. Do you know what I mean? Sean travelled to, to America and fought him. Um, bad score, um, scorecards, and he 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 lost. And if there was a rematch to happen, a lot of things have to change around where it is and what judges are sitting down to score. And if a and if a rematch was to be made, do you feel it would play out the same way it did the first time, or possibly a few changes from Barbos or to seem he could or to give him a better chance of winning the fight? I think it plans out the same. I've sparred Sean, like I said, I've trained with him for fifteen years, and um. He's one of the best technical fighters that I've ever had the, the privilege of sharing the ring with. So he's a tricky, tricky southpaw that can stand in the pocket at, at times and, and let his hands go. And he's got fast hands, big, long levers. So I believe it it, it would be the same result. Um, I think Barbosa got found out for what he is. I'd like he, He's kind of had a... He's, he's fought a couple of decent fighters and he's beat them, but... um. Someone like Sean McCormick was just all wrong for him and he, he lost the fight. Then very lastly, we'll just look at the main event of the evening from Saturday night. Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia. Um, just an incredible fight. Um, what did you make of the whole thing, first of all? Crazy, crazy fight. Um, very happy for Ryan Garcia. I, mean, I, I wanted him to win. Um, but you can tell he's not right. See people coming off. People saying beforehand, oh, he's, he's not right in the head. And then he goes and wins. And then they're saying... Oh, he, he tricked everyone and whatever else. Ryan Garcia is not right in the head. He needs the right people around him. Um, because the, if that's the way he is in in general, and he can go and perform for a play, but that's the way he he was carrying on leading up to the fight. You can tell that he he's mentally fragile, and um, he needs to get help definitely. So do you feel I see some people saying that? The way he was acting would have been mind games. So do you not believe they were mind games? No. You, the, if that was mind games, and then he he should get an Oscar for for acting. He should become an actor instead of a boxer because that was unbelievable. There's no way that you can act that out. There's no way that you. Maybe some of it was mind games, but there's the the stuff that he was doing and coming in heavy and um, do you know what I mean? Talking about sniffing coke and drinking and al uh, weed and whatever else. There's, there's no chance. Listen, I'm near sure that he signed himself in before, and he had he had a mental breakdown, and um, yeah, he took a a while off from from the ring. So you just have to look at his past. He he's been mentally fragile before. He, he's he's been in them situations struggling from mental health issues. This is the same. And um, do you believe those? I'm not I'm not going to call them antics, but the way Ryan Garcia was behaving. Do you believe that did distract Devin Haney? Um, I think they probably got into his head where Devin Haney wanted to. If you watch that fight, Devin Haney came forward and was the aggressor more than he's probably ever been in any of his other fights, and I think that just played into Garcia's um game plan. He hurt him early, then he went on the back foot and let um Haney get maybe a bit too confident and and. He he kind of committed a bit too much, and then he caught with a left hook. Do you know what I mean? So, um, I do believe the uh, probably did get into his head a bit. Um, but it's just it was crazy game plans from from uh Haney. You you would expect him just to use his boxing ability. Do you know what I mean? Amongst the madness, you you never let anyone distract you from from the end goal and the game plan and whatever else. You you got to stick to it. And I I I don't believe that would have been the game plan going into the fight to put pressure on him. And there's been, obviously, in the post-fight interview, Devin Haney said he'd love to have a rematch with him. Obviously, this is the seventh time they've shared the ring now, but first time professionally. Ryan's already said that he's going to be moving up to 147 as he struggles with 140. A lot of the a lot of the public and fans were saying it looked like Haney was struggling to make 140. Do you believe if a rematch is made at 147, we'll see a different outcome? Um, 
I don't know how either of them are struggling for 140 because they're not massive for the weight. Um, I believe Haney's just moved up to 140 as well. He, he was 135 and so was Garcia. Um, so, and is that Garcia's, I think, second fight at 140? Um, so I don't know how either of them get a good nutritionist and and train hard and you, you'll make the weight. Um, but no, I think. I think if they moved up to one one four seven, it definitely benefits uh Garcia because he's gonna be a lot bigger and he's got natural power, so he's he's always gonna carry that power up. So if I was Haney, I would want that at one forty, and I would make sure that he makes the weight at one forty, or I wouldn't fight. Um, but yeah, it's an interesting one. I don't know. I was always told a good boxer will always beat a good fighter, and I think that was nine time. That was what that one time that Garcia would beat Haney. He just he got him on the right night. Nine times out of ten, I I believe Haney would beat um Garcia just because of his his boxing ability. But that's only if he, he stuck to the the game plan because there's no way that could have been the game plan going into the fight to put pressure on him and and go and fight him. Do you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I don't know. It's it's a it's a an interesting one if if it if it gets made again and if they both fight at one forty seven. But even again, that there was that I thought the referee was dreadful in that fight dreadful like how can you can clearly see that he was fav favoritism um Heaney in the fight in terms of holding do you know what i mean he took a, p a point away from garcia rightly rightfully so for hitting him after or in a clinch whenever he was trying to the referee was trying to break him but Heaney held so much in that fight so did garcia but Heaney held so much in that fight and should have had a point taken away and he didn't um so it's the judging and refereeing and in certain fights are, are crazy. Well, Kim, okay, I think that's a good place to leave it. Thank you very much for your time today. And uh, I hope we get a fight date for yourself soon. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you, man.